As an IT technician, one of the complaints that I get most often is from someone complaining about their internet connection or their Wi-Fi connection. And confusingly, they often incorrectly exchange the two, like it's anything like Wi-Fi is the same as an internet connection, which it clearly isn't, and I'm going to explain why. But today I'm going to split this video into four parts. One, explaining what a home hub is. Secondly, why it could be the source of many of your problems. Three, my situation. And four, how I resolved my issue and how you can resolve yours. Hey guys, my name is Ryan Thomas with Failtech and this is why you should probably replace your ISP's multifunction network device. So a home hub is like a hub, right? No, it's not actually a hub at all. And it hasn't got a hub as part of it and it's not a hub at all. The reason that these companies kind of go and tell you it's a home hub is so that you can get confused and then they can offer you new services and stuff like that. But a home hub, such as the many that I have here, let's take this one as an example, is one that's supplied by BT. Now it's not the newest, the newest is actually over here, but this is going to be one that I can give as an example. But a hub is like a switch. So it has a box with a bunch of ethernet ports or any kind of ports on it, but usually ethernet, which is what you'd usually connect from your computer to the home hub. This is confusing me already. But when you send data over one of these, or a typical switch, it sends the data to the switch, the switch knows where to push it, so you might have five computers on your network, Sally wants to send one to John, Sally sends the data to the switch, the switch sends it to John, because it knows that PC via IP addresses and a bunch of stuff that I won't get into right now. However, a hub distributes that data to every other device on the network, so you, you can see what the problem is. So a home hub then is not a hub, because when you send data to it, it smartly selects where the data should go, because you've told it where to go. So we know that it's definitely not a hub. But another term that gets pushed around a lot is that it's a router. Well, technically this is kind of correct because it does have the routing capabilities or the gateway capabilities, which connects many LANs together. So you kind of send stuff to the router, the router then sends it off to the internet. That's basically how a router works. So yes, this is partly router, but it's also partly switch because it has those ports on the back, meaning that you can send data to it and from it wired but it also has something called a WAP, which is a wireless access point, and it's probably what you're using <laughs> to connect to your Wi-Fi, which is usually up here, and it's usually got some antenna. This is a similar scenario, just not quite BT branded. So this multi-function network device is part router, part switch, and also part WAP. And the reason that this is usually the cause of a lot of people's problems is the fact that it's not made very well. I've had, as you can see on this table, loads of these. I've got a BT Hub 3, two BT Hub 5s, and a new BT Smart Hub thing. I also have a TP-Link router from back in the day that is a router, a switch, and a WAP. So it is technically a multifunction network device. So now that you know what a home hub is, or a multifunction network device is, I'm gonna to explain to you the problems that I had. One is that I would constantly get drops between the actual router and the ONT on the wall, which kind of converts my optical connection, which is fiber, to my LAN connection that I can plug straight into here. There was some kind of drop, and I know it wasn't the ONT because I'd already had that replaced. So I got sent out a bunch, well, I actually got sent out two, this one and this one, there's another one in the bin. Uh, well, not now, it's in the skip. And they weren't really doing much, actually, to my connection. They weren't actually making anything any better. And I would constantly get drops, and I'd also get a lot of Wi-Fi drops, and my house is not big uh, by any means. I've told you that it's a small house, but it's actually made of quite thick walls, it's quite an old house. And so having a WAP that wasn't very powerful, or wasn't very brute forcey, was difficult to actually kind of pass data. So upstairs, our Wi-Fi was basically non-existent. So after so many phone calls to BT, my ISP, and after arguments and arguments, they wouldn't settle. And they sent me a bunch of these and they still couldn't get anywhere. So they thought, right, we're giving up on this customer. However, I remembered I had this, which is an old TP-Link multifunction network device. I had it for years and years. It used to be just solely an access point because a lot of these you can actually set up to do one thing other than all three or all four things that they do. I found the settings online on a BT forum, which are kind of the login for the router so that the router can connect to BT and stuff like that. That stuff I don't actually know about in further down the line. However, I managed to find the settings. I put in the settings on kind of the uh, UI that comes with this and I hooked it up and lo and behold, it was actually very reliable. I was getting better Wi-Fi. This is actually not quite as fast. It's N and it's an old standard versus AC on the newer stuff. So it was nowhere near as fast as I wanted, but it was definitely more reliable and I wasn't getting a single drop, which was really important when I was playing Counter-Strike because I really didn't want to lose connection during a match. So then I thought, well, this is something I found in an old box up in my attic. Maybe I can replace it with something a bit more substantial. 
So then I went and I bought one of these. This isn't a sponsored video. I bought one of these, which is a Linksys AC1200, which they call smart router and all that. But like I said previously, it's a multifunction device. And I hooked that up and my gosh, the speed, the reliability and everything to do with this has made my life so much easier. I went on Amazon Prime, I ordered this next day delivery, I set it up and within the first hour, everything was hunky-dory, like there was never ever a problem at all. Now the reasons that I think this is better are because the hardware in here is a little bit more specialized, it's a little bit more of an expensive piece of hardware and isn't gonna be mass produced for the public for every BT customer like this one is. It also was able to accept my settings like this one and has a much nicer and less buggy UI to actually connect to and install and update firmware. However, the one thing I can't quite put my finger on is that this is more reliable from the ONT to the router part of this multifunction network device. So I'm not quite sure why that is and why the BT ones aren't as good as something that isn't designed for that ONT because it's a very specialized piece of kit. So I'm not sure why that is, but it kind of is. So I, I, I'm not gonna complain about that. I've performed a couple of these upgrades in other people's houses and it's really crazy how much difference just something that a third party can make. Now, of course, in an ideal world, I would have a separate router switch wireless access point. And I actually do have an access point and a couple of switches dotted around the house as well as this. But it's just, it just takes up so much space. When you've got one of these, you only need one power connection, one WAN connection, and whatever LAN connections you want. Whereas with separate devices, yes, it kind of makes more sense to do it that way with faster connections. However, it does take up more space and it's something not a lot of people want to do. So when people say my Wi-Fi is down, that could be to do with this. However, when people say my internet connection is down, it's down to this multifunction network device. And my gosh, have I said that phrase a few times in this video. So my recommendation to you, my viewers, too long didn't read, is that if you have problems, because I know a lot of people who don't have problems with these, but if you do, to go out, get one of the cheapest, especially on Amazon, they have an amazing returns policy, get one of these bad boys or any kind of multifunction network device, they call them routers, so that's something to look out for, and just buy it and try it out. Now, the reason I got so lucky is actually because I could find the BT settings on their forum, on a BT forum. So I'll put them on the screen right now if you have a BT device, which not a lot of people will, but it's there for the few people that do and do want to try this out. All right guys, I hope you took something away from this video because it was kind of higgledy-piggledy, but I tried my best to structure it. I've got all my notes on my phone. Also, when did the UK turn into a sauna? Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. Please do like or dislike based on your thoughts and put those thoughts in the comments below. And let me know if you want any more of this networking stuff and PC stuff. Please do subscribe if you're new around here and never miss a video like this one thank you to has tech gamer thank you for darren and ross for supporting me on patreon go follow my social medias if you want it can help me out and we can also start a conversation over there as well my name has been ryan thomas with her tech and i'll see you in the next video peace